the wedding day to the saints. And he got to talking about, I can't wait for that wedding. And, and I looked over there, and Aaron was shouting. And I'm thinking, who, what are you talking about? Did y'all catch that? He's the only one shouting. I don't know when, when, he, when would, well, I never heard him about the engagement yet, amen. He, something I don't know about, amen. I don't know. Amen. Who said, uh, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord? Who else said it? <laughs> Who else said it? Have you ever said it? Could you say it? If you said it, would you mean it? He said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Turn to Joshua chapter 24. Sooner or later, you're going to have to make a choice. All of us have to make choices. Matter of fact, we make choices every day. But sooner or later, you young people are going to grow up and have to make your own choice. What will your choice be? Will it be what Joshua chose? Will it be what your mother and father has chosen? Grandparents have chosen? Friends have chosen? Will it be what the world's chose? Will it be what worldly parents have chose? Worldly friends? Amen. you got to make a choice. Joshua 24, verse number 14. This is Joshua's last charge to the children of Israel. You know, come, there come a day we're going to give our last charge. You never know when it's going to be our last day. I was sitting over there as they were singing a little bit, and I don't know how your mind wanders like Brother James said this morning, you know how it just kind of thoughts go in your mind. I got thinking about old Brother Brooks. Gone. Brother Larry, gone. People left us. Hey, you never know when our day's going to come. Hey, Amen. If you're going to do something, we better do it now. Amen. <clears throat> Joshua 24, verse 14, the Bible says, now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up out of our brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage in which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites which dwelled in the land, therefore we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. Let's ask the Lord to help us this morning. Brother Johnny Peel, how about pray for us, brother? <coughs> Thank you, Lord. You're so good to us. Thank you, Lord. Touch them, bless them, Lord. Help them. Amen. As we 
we said this is Joshua's last charge before his death. We see in verse number 29, And it came to pass after these things that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. He's charged his people to make a choice. He said in verse 15, Choose you this day whom you will serve. He said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. But he's charging the people to make their own choice. And Joshua can't make their choice. They can't make Joshua's choice. They got to make their own choice. How much we'd like to make the choice for our kids, we can't make it. How much we'd like to make the choice for our grandchildren, we can't make it. How much we'd like to make the choice for our loved ones, we cannot make it. Everyone must make their own choice. So I want to preach on that thought this morning. What is your choice? What is your choice? Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served, that way on the other side of the flood, or the god of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Not what would your mama choose. Yeah. Not what would your father choose. Yeah, not even what your wife would choose. Or your husband would choose. Right. Hey, not what your friends would choose. No, what will you choose? Yeah. What is your choice today? Hey, hey, could you say honestly out of a sincere and truthful heart, I will serve the Lord. Yeah. What is your choice? We all have a choice. Do you know you can't serve two masters? Right. He'll say, well, I want the Lord, and I love the Lord, but I want a little bit of the world, too. It don't work that way. Hey, I don't care how much you try. People have tried uh, with more willpower than you and I. People have tried this, been through more experiences than you and I, and they have found out you cannot serve them both. Right. You can't put one foot in the world and one foot in the church. It will not come to pass. Right. The Lord Jesus Christ said, you cannot serve two masters. Matthew 6 and 24, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. It can't happen. Amen. It won't happen. Amen. It won't come to pass. Hey, you got one hand on the world, one hand in church. Hey, sooner or later, you're going to go under trying to serve them both. Many people are trying to do it today. Amen. Hey, some people don't even want to answer. Some people think no answer gets you off the hook. Hey, what's your choice? Death, quiet. What will you choose? Well, I ain't going to say I'll choose the Lord. I'm not going to say I'm going to choose the world. Just go play neutral. What's your choice? Amen. Hey, you got to make a choice. It's kind of like Elijah when he stood up before the prophets of Baal. Amen. What did he ask him? He asked him this. How, how long halt you between two opinions? Yeah, right. If the Lord be God, yeah. serve him. Right. If Baal be God, serve him. Yeah. Elijah said, hey, boys, if God's God, then serve him. If Baal's God, serve him. You know what they said? They answered him not a word. Yeah, right. Why won't they answer? Some people think, well, if I don't answer, I kind of, you know, I'm not accountable. You're accountable already. I mean, it's no out of sight, out of mind. You've got to make a choice. It's like John the Baptist said, hey, uh, John, uh, the Lord said, the baptism of John. Yeah, right. Whence was it? He said, was it from heaven? He said, or was it from men? And they said, oh, if we say of heaven, he's going to say, well, why didn't we submit to John? Why didn't we believe him? If we say it's of men, we fear the people. And the Bible said, they said, we cannot tell. Yes, you can. You can tell. You know whether it's right. You know whether it's wrong. You know whether it's right to serve God or serve the devil. Hey, you just choose not to answer. You got to make a choice. Hey, man, silence is a choice. No choice is already a choice. Do you know when you won't make a choice, you're choosing the world over God? Hey, you're choosing the devil over the Lord? Hey, you know what the God, God you know what Joshua said by the help of the Lord? He said, who you want to serve? He said, the, father, the gods your father served on the other side of the flood, on the other side of Egypt, the God in whose land you dwell, or the Lord God. Yeah, right. There's three choices. I mean, you can serve any God in the past. You can serve any God that's in the future right now that you're living in the present, or you can serve the true and living God. Yeah, right. 
Amen. Hey, you got to make a choice. Amen. We all have a choice. Hey, Joshua chose God. You know, as far as Joshua was concerned, there was no other choice. Do you know, really, there is no other choice? I mean, who, who, is, who is another God besides our God? Uh, Jake Galatians says this, How be it then when, you knew, when they knew not God, ye did service unto them which were by nature or no gods. Hey, the gods we used to serve wasn't gods. Our Lord is God. Amen. Why would you serve anybody besides him? What's the devil ever done for you? A little, little satisfaction for a time, a moment, a little fraction of time, a little peace, a little happiness that the world gives. It just fades away. That's what you're going to sell God out for. Sell him out for one night stand. Sell him out for one high. Sell him out for one drink. Sell him out for one lie. Hey, what you going to sell the Lord out for? It's not worth it. You got a choice. Joshua said, hey, you choose you this day whom you will serve. Will it be the gods your father served? Hey, hey, some of you, hey, man, got mamas and daddies that ain't saved. You going to serve the God they serve? You gonna, hey, some of you got friends that don't know the Lord. You going to serve the God they serve? Who you going to serve? Are you going to serve the God, the true and living God, the God of this book? You got a choice. We must make a choice. Amen. Whom will you serve? Joshua said, this is my last, that's my last rahah hurrah. This is my last sermon. This is the last message I'll ever preach to you. Let me leave you the thought. Hey, make a choice today to serve the Lord. Tomorrow never comes. Hey, get it settled in your heart right now. I'm going to serve the Lord. You got to make a choice. Amen. And there's only one real God. Joshua chose God, amen. The psalmist said in Psalms 119, verse 30, I have chosen the way of truth. What have you chose? Amen. Hey, what, 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 what causes you to make your choice? Have you really weighed out the options? Have you really counted the costs? Have you looked forward a little bit ahead to see what this choice is going to make in my life? Hey, hey, the problem is we don't look towards the future. That's why the judgment seat of Christ don't fear us. It's out of sight, out of mind. Hey, but we're going to give an account of what choices we made. Hey, we're just looking at the immediate. Hey, what gratification is going to give me? Yeah, but what are the ramifications of the choice? What happens if you come with child? What happens if you fall into some addiction or some drug? What happens if you can't break the hold of the choice that you made? We don't look that far. The addict never looked that far before he wound up in that place. The drunkard never looked that far before he wound up a drunkard. The whore never looked that far before she gave a prostitute and wasted her life away. Hey, you got to make a choice. What will your choices bring in your life? Moses chose the Lord. The Bible said when Moses was come to years, he refused to be the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Hey, choosing, that's what the Bible says, choosing rather to suffer the afflictions with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin, which are four seasons. You know what Moses said? I'd rather suffer the rest of my life. That's a strong choice. I'd rather suffer the, for the cause of Christ than enjoy the riches and the pleasures that Egypt has to offer. He had them at his hand. He could have been king of Egypt. Could have ruled and reigned and lived in all the, uh, the pomp and the money and the prestige Egypt had to offer. But Moses said, when he came to years, this is my choice, this is my decision. I'm choosing to go with the true God. What will you choose? Hey, hey, here's a thought. What will the prophet of man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? What are you selling God out for? What is it? What is this causing you to walk away from God? The true and living God. The only God. What causes people to walk away from church and walk away from the people of God, walk away from their stand with God? What causes them to go away? What causes them to make those choices? When I'm just leaving the church, I ain't leaving God. How does that work? When God established the church. I mean, you mean you got some little... Thing you and God got on your own together? That ain't working. Amen. If it is, the God that you claim to be serving, He ain't too holy. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm just leaving the church, but I ain't leaving God. Well, why is your life going to hell? Yeah, right. yeah, 
Because you left God, that's what you did. You walked away from the Lord. You made choices that is destroying your life. Moses came to years. He made a choice. Hey, you got to make a choice. Why do young people get to a certain age and they go away? They run away from God. Hey, young people, you better make a choice. I'm going to serve the Lord. Whether my mama serves, whether my daddy serves, whether my friends serve, I'm making a choice. God is my God, and I'm going to serve him. You got to make a choice. Joshua said, hey, choose you this day. Who's he talking to? Everybody there. Everybody's got to make a choice. You got to make your own choice. Amen. Hey, quit riding on everybody else's choice. What if they change their mind? You got to make a choice. Moses made a choice. The people said, Moses will serve the Lord. You're right. He's God. Our fathers have told us what happened on the other side of the flood in Egypt and how God delivered us miraculously and how God's been good to us, which was obvious. He's delivered us through all the trials through Moses. He's delivered us through everything with you. And the Bible said in verse number uh, uh, 19, and Joshua said unto the people, you cannot serve the Lord. <laughs> what? Look in verse 21. And the people said unto Joshua, nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, ye are witnesses against yourself that ye have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. You know what people said? That's what we'll do, Moses. You know what some of you say? Preacher, you're right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to serve the Lord. I mean, it, it's a no-brainer. Why would I want to serve the God of this world? He ain't doing nothing but destroying and killing people. Hey, this world's going to hell in a handbasket, amen. Anybody with any sense can see what's going on in our world. Not trying to be a doomsday prophet, but hey, wake up and, and smell the coffee, man. It ain't getting better. Yeah, right. Evil men and seducers are waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Right. Our world's going down fast. You better get right with God. Amen. We will serve the Lord. Okay, you said it. That many mean it. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to serve God, okay? You're going to serve him now that you're 13. What do you do when you get 17? Hey, some of you, 10, 12, 11, you know, make decisions. My life's to God. Waiting on the right man, waiting on the right lady. I'm going to serve the Lord. What's happening lately? God ain't changed. Same God you make commitments to, I'm going to serve the Lord. Hey, it's good to make a choice, but where's your stand? Right. Amen. Hey, Mom and Daddy, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to raise our youngest right. Yeah, but now to get a little older, and, may, and, and the world's getting a hold of them. Now you backing up. Right. I'm talking to my youngest like that. Why, you didn't mind when they was 12? Hey, hey, you still serving the same God? There ain't nothing changed. How is it in church preaching the same thing year after year, year after year, and decade after decade, and when you change, when you, you get certain ages, everything changes. It's about like my granddaughter been walking in the house saying, I'm going to preach. And, and Katie said, Daddy, you hear what she said? She want to preach. She said, she can't preach. She's a girl. I said, if she wants to preach, she can preach. Everybody's supposed to preach. Just can't get behind the pulpit, amen. It's a little joke, amen. Amen. We, we, we change. We, we're, our doctrine doesn't matter. Our stands doesn't matter. Hey, hey, what happened to the choice that you made? They told Joshua that day, hey, we're going to serve the Lord. Guess what? We already read it. Verse 29, Joshua died. Then what happened? Hey, you going to serve the Lord? What are you going to do when mom and daddy dies? What are you going to do with those peers that you looked up to die? What are you going to do with the elders die off? What are we going to do? Yeah. We're going to still serve the Lord? Yeah. Hey, wait. Hey, you got a choice. Hey, man, make a choice. Hey, 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 sooner or later, people are going to die off. What are you going to do? Yeah, what happened to the commitments you made to God? What happened to the decisions you made? What about the testimonies that come out of your mouth? Yeah, How God was so good, and I'm going to serve the Lord. God's been so good to me. What happened? Choices. You got to make a choice. They said, we'll serve the Lord. Look, look, in, look in the next book, Judges chapter number 2. Look in verse 10. Judges 2 and 10. 
you, you read the beginning of the book of Judges, you see the reaccounting of Joshua's death there in the beginning of chapter 1, just like Joshua ended us a recap. Amen. Then in chapter 2 in verse 10, and, all that, and, and also all that generation were gathered. Joshua the son of Nun died, verse 8. They buried him in verse number 9. And all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. Listen to this. And there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, look, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Do you remember what the people said to Joshua? We're going to serve the Lord. Joshua died and that generation died off. And the Bible said there rose up another generation that knew not the Lord, nor went yet the works which he had done in Egypt. Hey, hey, one of two things happened. That generation that said we're going to serve the Lord didn't serve him and tell nobody about God. Right. Or that generation was there and they didn't listen to what they told them. I believe it's probably a combination of both. There were some of them that wasn't listening to nothing just like some people are today, but there were some of them that said we're going to do it and just didn't do it. Right. Ain't held up there into the bargain. Right. We're going to serve the Lord. Yeah, until what? There's no God above our God until you fill in the blank. What will you trade God out for? Well, we love the Lord. Yeah, but look how you treat him. Look what you put before him. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saying. Hey, Amen. Hey, hey, what is it that it caused you to, God's got to wait. Is it that important that you put it before the Lord? There's nothing better than God. You know your choice. Do others know it? Here's a thought. Does the devil know what choice you've made? Does he know that you've made a choice? The devil. You said the devil? Yeah. Remember the Lord when the devil showed up in Job, uh, in the book of Job chapter number one, and the devil showed up in the, in the heaven, and the Lord said, hey, you considered my servant Job? That's what the Lord said. You know what Job said? You know what the devil said? Who is Job? No, that ain't what he said. You know what he said? Yeah, I checked him out. Paraphrasing, but you go back and read it. It's in there. He, he only serves you for naught. You drop down the hedge around him, and I'll show you what he means. Do you know what when the Lord said, if you considered my servant Job, you know what the devil knew? Yeah, I know that rascal. Yeah, right. I've been trying to get him. I've been looking for a way to destroy him. Hey, 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 does the devil know you stand for God? Right. Does he know that, hey, 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 you're one hard to get to because God's got a hedge about you? Yeah, Mom and daddy's prayed a hedge about you. Mom and daddy, does the devil know you got a hedge around your children? Yeah, right. That's what Job did. He prayed for his children every day. Pray for Richard, they might have sinned. Yeah, right. Hey, don't be so gullible, Mom and daddy. Yeah. The flesh is wicked. They got a flesh just like you got. Hey, man, you know yours is wicked. How do you think theirs is? Yeah, right. Hey, 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 does the devil know your choice? Yeah. The Lord said, hey, have you considered him with the devil? Say, yeah, I've been checking on him. Hey, hey, does the devil know your choice? Hey, hey, does God know your choice? Hey, Amen. The Bible said, for the ways of, the, of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondered all his goings. Hey, Amen. God's watching you. Right. Does God know what choices you make? Hey, you know, I don't believe it hurt every once in a while just to remind the Lord and say, you know what, Lord, I just want you to know, just in case you was doubting, I'm still on your side. Yeah. I don't believe you'd hurt God's feelings at all. Yeah, yeah. You say, preacher, but he already knows everything. He's God. Yeah, but I don't believe it upset him if you reminded him. Yeah, right. you, know, you, know, you know, I know my youngest are my youngest, but it would not hurt my feelings if every once in a while they wanted to tell me how much they really love me. You know, I know them grandbabies is mine, but it would not hurt my feelings if they want to crawl up in my lap and love on me. He reassure me, amen. I'm still the one, most one that is, you know. Hey, I'm sure the Lord wouldn't be upset if you remind him how much you love him. Crawl up in his lap and love on him and tell him, God, you're my God, and I'm glad you're my God, and I'm going to serve you till I die. Amen. Just want to let you know just in case you've been doubting. Because maybe... I'll give you some reasons to doubt lately. Does the Lord know? Does the devil know? Hey, here's a good thought. Does the lost world know your choice? We're ambassadors for Christ. 
We've been left here as missionaries to this world. We're this lost world's hope. Does the lost world know that you love God and he's your choice? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 8 and 3, if a man loves God, the same is known of him. Does the lost world know your choice? They ain't a person that you come around with ought to know the choice and the God that you serve. I mean, somebody ought not to be shocked if they found out you've been going to church. What? You got to be mixed up with somebody else. No, they ought to know. That you ought not to be ashamed to let them know. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ was the power of God and the salvation. I'm not ashamed of what God done for me. Hey, 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 the devil ought to know, God ought to know, and the way the world ought to know your choice. You know what it does? It gives some accountability. Hey, those kids at the schoolhouse, those kids on the playground, those kids on your on your social media pages, hey, hey, those people at your job at doors, everybody ought to know you're a child of God. Maybe be less chances of marital affairs, husband and wife. If everybody knows down at the job that you're a Christian, she might not wink her eye at you so often. He might not talk those flirty words to you if he knew you was a child of God. Save you a lot of trouble, amen. Amen. Hey, hey, you need to make a choice. We're going to serve the Lord. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 9, if there, I therefore so run, not as in certainty, so fight I not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be also be a castaway. Yeah, right. A waste. The world ought to know. Hey, here's a thought. Your brother ought to know. Yes, the devil ought to know. The Lord ought to know. The lost world ought to know. But say people ought to know where you stand. Yeah, I kind of worry when I get around other Christians and I don't even know where they stand at. Paul listed a list of them in 2 Timothy chapter number 4. You know, so-and-so's here, this and this and that. Demas have forsaken me. Hey, does your other brothers and sisters in Christ know where you stand? Hey, here's a thought. Maybe they know where you stand, but it ain't a good thing that they know. There are certain people you'll let into other things that nobody else will, your inner circle, right? You got a little inner circle of friends that know you're not real? That's a shame. Yeah, amen. That ain't right. They know certain things about your life nobody else knows and it ain't godly? That ain't good. You say, oh, that's cool. No, there ain't nothing cool about that. Hey, man, you might be destroying their life. Yeah, amen. You're already destroying yours. Hey, do they know? How can people know? You know how I know they can know? Hey, number one, you'll speak it. You're not ashamed to speak up. Joshua said in Joshua 15, he said, you make a choice. But listen to me, boys. Listen to me, ladies. Listen to me, youngins. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. But you know what? There's a little bit of a manliness right there too also. Hey, hey, husbands, you ought to be some leaders in your home. I'm not talking about dictators. I'm not talking about trying to rule with an iron fist and beat your family into subjection. Hey, but if anybody ought to lead the home, it ought to be some men. God give us some godly men. Where are the godly men have ceased? Where are they gone? Hey, Joshua said, hey, that's for me and my house. That goes for me. That goes for my wife. That goes for my children. We going to serve the Lord. I done made a choice. They going to follow me by the grace of God, and we going to serve God. Hey, you know how people will know it if you'll speak of him? People know what you love. People know who you've chosen by the way you talk. Amen. Hey, hey, here's, here's, here's a bad thing. Just in this case, some people speak it and don't mean it. But, they ought, but it ought to be spoken. You know, if you're ashamed to speak it, there's probably a good problem. There's probably a good uh, chance that there's something wrong in your heart. If you could speak about everything but the Lord. That was the psalm to say, my heart is indicted in a good matter. Hey, you're going to speak it, man. It's down inside of you. You can't help but to talk about it, amen. Hey, 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 you're to speak about your God. God help us. And we've shut up about our Lord and everybody else is speaking about everything. 
You got the transgenders' voices, and you got the, the, the lesbians and the gays, and you got everybody speaking. But God's people have shut up their mouths. Yeah, right. If anybody's got anything to say, it's God's children. Yeah, if there's any hope, it's going to be truth. We need to speak it in this world. Yeah, they to know your choice. They to be your speech ought to tell on you. Yeah, amen. All that's coming out of your mouth is filth and garbage. Hey, how they going to know your God? My God ain't filth. My God ain't garbage. Right. You ought to speak about it. That's how people will know. Hey, 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 you ought to speak about what you love. Hey, hey, you know what? As long as, as, as they're in front of you, you might speak it, but what do you do when nobody's around? When nobody's looking. Hey, number two, if they're going to know it, you're going to speak it, but number two, you're going to show it. Look at verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. And serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. And in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. You'll show it. Do you show the Lord to the world? We show ourselves. We, we, we show off ourselves. But do we show the Lord? Jesus said in John 15, 19, Hey, we have been chosen out of the world. And if we've been chosen out of the world, we ought to live like we're chosen out of the world. God didn't save us to live in the world. God saved us to live for him. Amen. Hey, if you fear him, you'll serve him. In order to be shown by the fear that you got. He said, therefore, fear the Lord. You know what's wrong? We've lost the fear of God. Hey, why do you commit acts? There's no fear. You see the law running up down the road every mile. You know what you fear? Run it over the speed limit. So you check that thing. Nobody goes to Society Hill a mile over the speed limit. I mean, it's well known around the world, amen. They're going to give you a ticket. If you one mile over the speed limit, they're going to write you something. So you got that fear, you watch it, right? I mean, you're like this, 10 and 2, you know. You ain't playing no games, no telephone, no texting, no talking to your wife. It's like this, fear. Hey, you know what the problem is when it comes to God? We've lost the fear of God. Right. Right. Oh, God's gonna, not going to get me. Oh, you think that? Hey, that's why you live like that. You got no fear of God. You know what Joshua said? He said in verse 14, Now therefore fear the Lord. You better fear God. Right. Hey, man, you better fear what he'll do to you. Yeah. Right. Oh, God wouldn't do that. You try him. No, don't try him. You ever wonder why there's so much sickness and death going on in our world? You have, you, have you ever, has it occurred to you how young people are dying nowadays? The rate, I don't know, check it out. I don't know what the rates are. But it seems like they're way more than regular. People are dying younger and younger and younger. Some of it could be just a judgment of God on lives. You're not exempt from it. I'm not exempt from it. God chose us out of the world. Hey, hey, your choice, choices, how you live shows the choices that you made. Hey, when the Bible said, they said in Acts chapter number 6, choose us out some deacons, if you will. You know what they chose them all? What they saw them live. Honest, good report. They made a choice on how they live. Hey, hey, your choices are to show what you are. It'll be shown in your life. Acts chapter number 9, Paul is a chosen vessel. You know what he did? He showed it. He showed it. Amen. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2, 4, hey, he had been chosen as a soldier for Christ. Hey, God chose us. And we chose him. Fear the Lord. Keep his commandments. The whole duty of man. God said, he said, fear not man which can kill the body uh, but is not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. There's no fear. Why do people live like they live? No fear. It's the motto, no fear. Yeah, it shows. Look at the way you live. Look at how you act. You've got to make a choice. If you make a choice, people will know by the way you speak. They'll know by the way you show it. They'll know by the way you serve him. In sincerity and in truth. 
out of a true heart. You know why you serve the Lord? Because you love him. You know why you serve the Lord? Because he's been so good to me. Joshua said, fear the Lord, verse 14, and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve you the Lord. You know why I serve the Lord? Because he's the best thing ever happened to me. People ought to know it by the way we speak, by the what we show and who we serve. There's nobody been in it better to you than God has. There's nobody that's loved you any more than God has. There's nobody that's done more for you, your family, your life, your, ment your mental uh, mind, your heart, the peace. Nobody's been any better than God has. Why would you serve anybody else than him? He's worthy to be served. He's worth serving, amen. Hey, you're to serve him with a true, sincere heart. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus said uh, unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art car uh, 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 careful and, ca and troubled in uh, many things. But this one thing is needful, and Mary have chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. What did Martha chose? She chose to worship God. You know, you, know, you know what the devil knows? Who you bow down and worship is who you're going to serve. Amen. Remember when he took the Lord out and tempted him and showed him all these things in the world in a moment's time, by the way, and he said, bow down and worship, and I'll give you all these things. And the Lord answered him back. No, there's only one you should serve, and he's the Lord. There's only one that should be worshipped, and he's God, amen. You know what? Because the devil knew and God knew, knows that who you bow down and serve is who you're going to worship. Who you bowing down to? Who knows your choices? Joshua said, choose you this day. I like what Aaron says about that. Choose you this day. You know what happens when you read that tomorrow? It'll be this day. You got to make the choice today. You know what you have to do tomorrow? You have to make the choice tomorrow. It's a continual choice in your life. As new things arrive, as new temptations come, you've got to choose and say, God, I'm yours and you're mine. I made a choice to serve you today, and by God's grace, I'm going to serve you. And when I get up tomorrow, I made a choice to serve you, and by God's grace, I'm going to serve you today. You've got to make a choice. You know what some of you need? You need to choose salvation. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. You've got to make a choice. You got to make a choice of whether you're going to call out on the Lord and be saved or reject Him and go to hell. You got to make a choice. I mean, think about it. What's the world giving you? What's your, what's your life come to without God? Where are you at right now? Right there. Look at your life. Examine your life. You without God. What do you got? Well, I got a little bit of this. I got a little bit of this. I'll tell you what you don't have you don't have peace. You don't have true joy. You don't have assurance of tomorrow. You might have some of these things, but you don't have the true and living God. Amen. You know what you need to choose? To, to accept him as your savior today. Right. Hey, the best thing you ever do is give your heart to God Amen. and get the peace that passeth all understanding, a home up in heaven, joy down in your soul that only God can give to you when making the right choice. Right. Same thing serving him. Same thing serving him. You know why you lost your peace? You've lost your joy? You're serving somebody other than God. Joshua said, hey, I'm about to go. Choose you this day. What's your choice? Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19 to the people there, he said, I call heaven and earth to record this day. Moses has been talking to the people just as Joshua is talking to the people, just as you've been talked to today. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life. There's life in God and death. There's death without him. Blessing, there's blessings in serving him and cursing. Therefore, listen to this, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You got a choice. God's come for you a message. Hey, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. He made a choice. What's your choice? You know what's sad? 
Proverbs 1 and 29 says, For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Do you want to be real sad today? For you to not choose the Lord. What's your choice? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. You got a choice. Young people, you got a choice. Middle age, elderly, you got a choice. This world will destroy you if you're not careful. You better make a choice. Some of you maybe need to come today and remind the Lord of your choice. You need to let him know that God, what I committed to you back then, I still mean it today. What I told you that day when you saved me. I know it ain't looked good lately, but Lord, I meant it. Have you told him lately that you love him? Have you told him lately that he's worth serving? Make a choice. Be careful what you're choosing. You say, preacher, I can handle it. No, you can't. It'll destroy you. Sin will take you under. Make a choice. If you're here and you're lost, why don't you choose to be saved today? Give your heart to him. Can you honestly say, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. might have to go alone. But he's worth the choice. He's worth serving. He is worthy. Amen. Everybody stand. We've got some dinner on the grounds, don't we? Everybody stay and eat if you're able. I'm sure there's plenty that always is. If you didn't cook, don't worry about it. Just stay and eat. Service tonight. We're having a youth service tonight. It's the fifth Sunday. Amen. So the youth's going to handle everything from beginning to end. So I'm excited about that. Amen. Watching these youngins, amen, serve the Lord and use it in the church service. Amen. So be praying for them. Amen. Pray for one another. All hearts clear. Granddaughter River, some breathing issues. Pray for that. God to touch that baby. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's dismiss in prayer. Let's remember this request. Let's pray for the food that God will bless it. Amen. Brother Nolan, you dismiss his brother.